When you were a kid, do you remember the motivational signs and quotes posted on the walls of classrooms and hallways? Chase your dreams, reach for the stars, dream big, pursue your ambitions. I remember not only seeing words like that, but hearing them all the time too. At some point, however, it stopped. At some point, I wasn't hearing those words anymore. I was hearing warning signs about the so-called real world, advice about what is best for me and most attainable. When I was younger and I was asked what I wanted to be when I grew up, my answer changed a lot. I wanted to be a rocket scientist, an actor, a writer, an astronaut, a game developer, a YouTuber. I'm sure your answers changed too, but they were all probably something similarly ambitious. While watching Jellyfish Can't Swim in the Night, I have been shown the same innocent passion I once held. It has caused me to look back on those ambitions, only to see the remnants of them. Ashes of a fire that once burned so bright, once fueled by the people and environment around me. All I can wonder is where did all that ambition go? And how can I get it back? To reignite said ambitions, we must first identify how they were lost. There are many things that could cause them to fade. Jellyfish is excellent at illustrating some of the more prevalent causes. The most obvious answer is a lack of or change in interest. From childhood to adulthood, we change more than any other span of time in our lives. Our personality and interests change frequently, so it would only be natural for some of the things we dreamed of in childhood not to carry into adulthood. This happened to me with acting and playing my guitar. I tried them out for a bit, but ultimately decided they weren't for me and moved on. When we are pressured to pursue something so much in childhood, it can cause us to resent it too. May gradually lost interest in piano the more she played it. It became mundane to her, although unlike what many people experience, her interest was eventually rekindled. Maybe not the most obvious, yet definitely the most common from my understanding, is how realism and cynicism affects our dreams. I imagine that my experience was like many of yours, having this pessimistic reality shoved in our faces before we even get a chance to see it for ourselves. Joining the entertainment industry is perceived as an impossible and unrealistic goal to many. Trying to become an actor, writer, artist, or even something like an astronaut are all too lofty for the real world we are told about. That could not be further from the truth. As is shown in Jellyfish, careers in content creation, acting, writing, art, and other creative avenues have never been more accessible than they are now. Kiwi is a fairly successful VTuber at such a young age, a great example of how accessible these things are. Mahiru was able to spark a career in digital art. Kano was an idol for goodness sake. So why is there a stigma against chasing such dreams in the first place? I think it comes down to two things. Facing reality is not the same as grounding your dreams to it, and that's something that most people don't understand or misinterpret from the way we are taught in school. I am one of those people. When I chose my major for college, I chose cybersecurity over game development, a vaguely adjacent career path, because game dev was too competitive and may not pay the bills as easily. Don't get me wrong. I picked up a second major in network engineering and absolutely loved that more than I ever did game dev. I just avoided my dreams initially because of the cynicism that grounded me. The other reason I think the stigma exists is that a lot of the ambitious career paths aren't normal. To become an actor, a content creator, whatever it is, means following a non-standard career path. One where you may not be graduating high school, going to college, and getting a 9 to 5. Perceived stability lies in that normal path. 
So with the instability of something that diverts from it, people become afraid. Kiwi is one such person that did not follow that standard path laid out by her peers. She became a VTuber so early in her life and struggled with school attendance because her peers didn't approve of her innocent, ambitious attitude. Miko experienced something similar. Ariel's classmates saw her mom's career choice as strange, so they bullied her for it. It became such a problem that Miko even considered quitting her pursuit of becoming an idol. One impedance on childhood ambition that I have mentioned before in my video on finding purpose is envy. As I did when I saw game dev as too competitive, many people tend to compare themselves to others. They lack self-confidence because they see the amazing things other people are achieving, writing their own efforts off as being too far behind or not talented enough. I also do this a lot with my writing, and it's one major reason I stopped playing guitar to improve and really only play to have fun. Mahidu experienced this exact feeling when she saw fan art for Jelly. She saw how talented the other artists were, and it caused her to devalue her own talents. Her lack of self-confidence, along with a little bit of cynicism, are why she quit art before joining Jelly. The final obstacle Jellyfish presents are events in life. Whether good or bad, it is inevitable that large events in your life will affect how you feel about your passions. Kano quit being an idol because of all the drama that arose from her punching another member of the group. It was something so simple that completely destroyed her drive and ability to pursue that career any further. I may have stopped going for a career in basically all of the things that I mentioned originally, but they aren't completely severed from my life. I still play guitar for fun. My acting interests were present in my participation in drama club during high school. I still write stories and act a little bit through role-playing in Dungeons and Dragons. I'm still involved in an adjacent field to game development, and I still make YouTube videos. It's clear that these things never really die completely, they only die down. For many, maintaining the dreams they had as a kid as hobbies is enough. However, because they never die out, they can still be reignited. Jellyfish demonstrates four ways this can be done. Through people, life events, community, and through media. Mahiru started creating art again for Jelly, and when her self-confidence was at stake, Kano gave her a reason to continue, to make art for another person. In the same way, Mahiru gave Kano a reason to continue singing, to sing for another person. Mei chose to compose music for Jelly and for Kano. Kiwi discovered her own ambition of becoming a teacher through the other members of Jelly. Miko decided to continue her idol career for her biggest fan, her daughter. Creating, working, studying, chasing your dreams for others is one of the best ways to reignite your ambition. For me, I am very lucky to have friends and family that support me in all of my pursuits, including YouTube. I look at my brothers, and I see two people who are actively pursuing their dreams. My older brother is creating his own tabletop role-playing game, something he has been working on for years and years of his life, and he's really doing it. My younger brother is going to study astrophysics in school. I am in awe of how they pursue their life dreams so readily and so naturally. When I see people immediately close to me that can do these things and succeed, it gives me the confidence I need to chase my own dreams. Just as events in life can halt your passion, so too can they ignite them. I've reached a turning point in life after graduating college. Now faced with the world and a whole life ahead, freedom and possibility, I have decided to more readily face one dream that I have held onto since I was a kid. In episode 8 of Jellyfish, you can really see how the fans of Jelly motivate the group members. Seeing the fan art, the people ready to watch them live, and the support on social media, the members of Jelly also saw the impact of their creations. They saw how people were brought together and enjoyed something they created. 
community truly is an amazing thing to behold. It is immediate and living proof of your impact. While not every ambition would see this in the form of a fanbase or following, the proof still shows in the community of your peers. Seeing all of your comments and support is what motivates me to continue YouTube, and watching Jellyfish has reminded me of that. So thank you. Media is one of the most prevalent influences on passion and ambition. Seeing other people's art, hearing their music, seeing a film, an anime, reading a story, whatever it is, the power of media is beyond any words. Although Jellyfish doesn't directly show this, its existence alone is enough proof of media's influence. I wouldn't have ever considered what my brothers were doing, how I could chase my own dreams, or that my ambitions had even been lost without this anime. Jellyfish and plenty of other pieces of media show you that your dreams are attainable. Loss of ambition is not an inevitable consequence of adulthood. It is merely a reflection of the obstacles we have faced, and they are many. But they can be avoided, and they can be overcome. Your ambitions never completely die, they can always be revived. You just have to have the drive and desire to pursue them. If you are worried about these things, if you have no one or nowhere to show off what you create and accomplish, then show me. I want to see what you all create. That is one thing I've always loved about the internet, is how easily you can share your ambitions with the world. So I would love for you to share them with me. YouTube videos, art, music, stories, whatever it is, doesn't matter. Send them in the Discord, post it in the comments, DM it to me if you want. I want to see you all chasing your dreams. I don't know where I'll be in the years to come. I don't know what I will be interested in or what I will be passionate about. There's no way I could ever really know. But right now, I want to take YouTube seriously. I want to be someone. I want to chase this dream, this ambition, because it is the last one I've held on to so dearly. I encourage you to do the same. This has been Cider Thoughts. If you enjoyed this video and haven't already, please consider subscribing. Thank you so very much for watching. I love you all, and until next time.